Hello, friends and families. Welcome to the Educa DPS podcast, where we inform families and connect communities. My name is Javier Ibarra, your host of the English Educa podcast. And today's topic is back to school strategies for students and parents. Today, we have our guest, Jason Nungary. Jason, how are you today? Good, how are yourself? Good. It's Great to have you on the show, first time on the show, yes. and so we're, we're going to be real easy with you here. I'm going to ask you a real tough question. What did you study, and what is the most gratifying experience that your education has given you? Yeah, great question. First and foremost, congrats on your Emmy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this, this is pretty sweet. We're pretty uh, excited about it here at DPS. This is the first Emmy that uh, a school district has won uh, in like five years. Wow. Yeah. Hopefully back-to-back -back Emmys. Oh, I don't know about that. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Well, it's what, what didn't I not study <laughs> okay. for my education? So, uh, you know, it, it began with X-Ray Tech uh, when I was at Community College in Merced. Um, I'm originally from California. Okay. So, and that necessarily didn't speak to me. So then followed by various different uh, majors, so graphic design, audio engineering, construction, and then I decided on veterinary science, went into veterinary science, the technical college, got my associates, and then moved forward um, and actually joined the Army Wow! for four years. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And then uh, I decided to go ahead and move forward with my bachelor's in psychology and then became a counselor. So, so then there was a huge shift during the four years that you were in the military to really find what you were looking for? Because how long have you been doing this particular job now? So I've been a school counselor for eight years. I will say it wasn't necessarily a huge, it was more so um, a mindset. So originally when I was in high school, I always wanted to be a school counselor. Mm -hmm. But I found out it took six years to do so. Well, actually seven years. So, And at that time, I thought that was too long. Right. I wasn't necessarily a Think, fan of thinking the long education yeah. and like being in college for so long. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the military and I was still in college, I said, I, I, well, I've been in college for the past six plus years. I don't really have much to show for. I might as well just go and do what I originally wanted to do. What a great story. And I know that some of the parents that are listening to your story here can relate because some of their students, I assume, would say, oh, I want to be this. And tomorrow I want to be that. And yeah. the next day I want to be something different. And for a parent, uh, who grew up, I would say, uh, either boomer, Gen X, or even early millen or older millennial, that would make them nervous. But we're here to tell you that you found your way, and your students might find their way as well. Absolutely. Or and will I, find their way. And I think, too, you push yourself to put your, be in that position. I think for me, a challenge for me in college was I was repeating the same courses okay. I was doing in high school. Mm. And so I was... I didn't want to do that, so I just went straight for my majors, which typically you don't do until you're like your third year of college. Right. But I wanted it now, and I wanted to see if I loved it. Yeah. And I wanted to try every opportunity in terms of what spoke to me. Right. And I, I always came back to school counseling, so I oh, always yes. challenge students um, to go out and like go and explore what you're looking for. Yeah. I think that's a great message to to tell our students and say, hey, like. It's okay not to know. Some students, you know right away. They were born to be this. Yeah. Right? They were born to do that. Um, just like an actor. They were born to be in that role. And everything led up to that. And so I think it's the same thing here where our students can be anything that they want to be once you've had some. And so we're going to talk about that in our, in our topic today. And I'm happy that we got that uh, um, out of the way because it's going to add to the background of the topic, which is... As the new year begins, the new school year, we must set ourselves up for success with effective back-to-school strategies. And so what we're going to talk about today, and leads me to my first question for you, is how can I set up and achieve realis realistic academic goals for the new school year, right? I pretend I'm a student, pretend I'm a parent. Yeah. How do we set up those realistic academic goals for the new year? I think first and foremost, just be honest with yourself. Um, what courses are you taking? Are they more challenging than previous courses, such as advanced placement or concurrent enrollment courses? What does your day-to-day -day look like? Family obligations? 
work obligations, I think it's important to reflect on the previous year and the struggles and the stressors and or stressors. Um, what worked for you back then? It's important to set SMART goals to see if your current schedule is working for you. For example, in the next six weeks, how many assignments did you miss? Is it more than you'd hoped? If so, like reassess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you receiving support? You know, are you talking to your teacher or counselor? Is your schedule too busy? Does your schedule need to change? It's important to set benchmarks to see how your month-to-month -month, to see your month-to-month -month progress. Right. Um, academics can slowly become like a haunting task if you become so far behind that you no longer feel successful. And that feeling can be can impact your entire academic year and your mental health. I heard that somewhere I heard that too much challenge and people give up but not enough challenge and likely they give up just as well and so it's it's finding that balance of if you look at what you have that's coming up and you know you're gonna fall behind quickly it's time to ask for help now Absolutely. right but likewise if you see what, what's going on you say well I have some room I have some room to, to, to do something, maybe fill it with an extracurricular, right? Something that can enrich your educational journey here at DPS. Um, I want to ask for my next question, what are some tips that you would give for staying motivated and engaged in school, right? This is a topic that it's very easy to just say, hey, just be motivated. Just mm -hmm. go out and do it, right? Nike, right? Yeah. But um, probably should mention we're not sponsored by Nike. Uh, but it's, it's, it's what we tell our students, like, just go do it, just go do it. It sounds so easy. What are some of the strategies that we can uh, have to be motivated? Yeah, great question. Well, I'd say take courses that interest you. If courses don't interest you as much based on your school's offerings, then what other opportunities are available, such as internships or volunteer work that interests you? What clubs are being offered? How are you trying to make a connection with your school community? Is it through sports, peer mentoring, arts, magic the gathering, social justice? You know, it just depends on what is important to you and what speaks to you. If you're doing law academically, um, speaks to you, then make sure you set benchmarks, such as um, in progress grades. Like at the quarter one ends, am I a straight A student? Is that where I want to be? Is that important to me? Well, I encourage all students to find what's important to them and explore what that could be. Build relationships with peers, teachers, to have a sense of belonging when you arrive at school each day. It's important to have a routine to ensure you're doing things that fill your soul on a daily basis. I appreciate you saying that. I know that when I was a student, and I'm currently a student now, I I'm, I'm, went back to school to start my master's. Um, and so, thanks. I know that as a, as a student, I'm trying to put myself in, in our students' shoes, in our parents' shoes, right? And I know that the Staying motivated can be daunting, right? Especially all of the societal pressures uh, that we have on our students. But I think it's it's uh, one foot in front of the other type of mentality, right? It's achieve little things today so that you can achieve big things tomorrow, right? And that's the way that I look at life. That's the way that I look at schoolwork is it, it all snowballs, right? Everything that you do right snowballs. But also there's going to be times where you're going to miss a step, mm -hmm. you know? But tomorrow's a new day pick it up keep going right and and really understand what your end site is what, what your end goal is because at the end of the day we all have I assume would be a, a similar end goal which is to be successful to achieve to achieve our goals right to graduate high school or if it's for our teachers is to provide a, a great educational experience for our students right um, I've been in the classroom in very privileged to be in the classroom because of the job that we have here at DPS where I get to interact with a lot of teachers and students and I tell you that fills up my day when I see a student really achieve or uh, succeed it's, it's amazing and if you ask them what what keeps them going it's a community hmm. right it's not going about it alone and so I, I really appreciate you saying that my next question for you is how can I stay organized and keep track of assignments and deadlines here at DPS. What is What are some of the things that are set up for us to be successful in that manner? Yeah. Well, most schools use Schoology, which is a great platform. 
Um, this is where courses are housed. This is where teachers load all the content to the courses. If your school doesn't use school, Schoology, then whichever platform they're using should have a way to keep track of deadlines. In terms of organization, it depends on the individual. If you prefer digital, then use Google Calendar or any other organizational app that's out there. If you prefer writing things down, then absolutely get a planner. There isn't a right way to organize as long as the individual is organizing their day-to-day -day responsibilities. I think it's important to have like a workspace that is dedicated to your work and keeping it clean so that you're productive as possible. But I also want to go back to what you were mentioning. Um, I always tell students there's like an 80-20 rule that I use. Mm -hmm. If you're 80% of the time happy and 20% where it has those um, peaks and valleys that you go through, mm -hmm. then that's, that's pretty great. Yeah, that's pretty but successful, I would if say. It's, if it's not 80-20, then I say always just reassess because that means you're, you're probably not happy most of the time. I'm glad you said that because, and I'm not a school psychologist and I'm not a school counselor, let's start with that. But from my own experience, I feel that we tend to, the message out there is you always have to be successful, you always have to be happy. And I think that in my personal journey, the times that I've succeeded the most, uh, there's been a lot of, like you said, peaks and valleys, right? Up mm -hmm. and down. But for the most part, I've enjoyed what I would call the process of getting there, right? And, and, and so I think it's a really important to tell our students, you know, to have the patience to see something through um, in order to uh, achieve, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the end goal, right? I look at like, um, recently I was watching this, this show about football players, mm -hmm. so I really like football. And uh, I didn't know this, but football players do a lot of studying a lot of studying because mm -hmm. they study the plays and memorize it. There's a lot of numbers involved, a lot of strategy involved. And so they're reading or uh, studying a lot, just as much as they are working out and playing football. And so to me, if I was a young student, I would be like, well, I want to be a football player and I'm pretty good. So why do I need to do good in school? Here's a prime example is those skills help you. And so, of course, maybe there are a rare few that really enjoy that part like ah, i really enjoy reading plays mm -hmm. and really enjoy doing these these complicated plays but i think most folks would say i really enjoy being out there and playing but it would benefit you to put in the studying now to put in that hard work now so that later you can do what you want mm -hmm. right so i think that's kind of the message that i took from that show and that i apply it to, to my own experience and that i like to share with our students right yeah. um it's the same thing everyone goes oh well, i want to be very rich yeah. you know i want to be super duper rich well you know there's a lot of responsibility with that you have to manage your money you have to be good with money like there's a lot of work that goes with it oh i want to be a ceo ceos work 60 to 80 hours Absolutely. you know and so it's it's a it's about perspective that we we share with our students, and I think that uh, it's been received very positively. Now, we're also saying, you know, don't fall in a trap of comparing yourself to somebody else and their oh, success. Oh, that's the worst, yeah. Because you'll, you'll never reach it. So yeah. just think about what makes you happy. What did, uh, there's that saying that say, uh, Einstein says, if you compare a fish's ability to climb a tree, it'll never <laughs> succeed, right? Because yeah. a fish doesn't climb trees, right? They right. swim and they're fast, right? And some fish are yeah. faster than others. So I think it's it's like you said right when you were answering this last question you said you know do what feels right for you right what's right for you and i think for me when i was growing up it's like what's right for everyone mm -hmm. i was always doing like what's gonna be right for everyone instead of being what's right for me Cause i like you had a lot of different things i started out as a architect's major oh. went to engineering saw how much math was involved in engineering mm -hmm. didn't like that so I went into business, jokes on me, because business <laughs> has just as much math. Uh, I always joke with people and say, well, you, do you like calculus? No. I was like, imagine it as a word problem. That's what business was. Everything yeah. was calculus, but it was a word problem. How many sheep are you going to sell? You're a farmer. How many sheep do you need to do this? And complicated equations. And so um, it's, it's different. It's a journey, right? But I enjoy what we do now. Uh, my next question for you is, what are some effective time management strategies for balancing schoolwork, extracurricular activities, 
part-time work and other responsibilities. I know for myself, I'm very interested to hear what you have to say here because when I was in high school, I did all of that. Yeah, I think the word no is helpful. I think it's easy to overcommit as a student. You have students building their resumes for, for colleges. They want to stand out. For students who place an incredible amount of responsibility, um, be sure that you're doing things that speak to you. Don't do things just to do things. For example, if you have a part-time job, just to have money <laughs> in your pocket for things you don't necessarily need, is it worth the stress? Um, there are students who need to provide for their family, and so they either need to be there to support and or work to earn an income uh, to support their families as well. So students may have an incredible amount of responsibility. Another thing to consider for time management is being organized, which is extremely important in terms of managing time. Having to look through various places to find your work and or find your charger for your computer can be time consuming. So prioritize your time by either having a to-do list or time blocks to help identify the times you need to plan for completing your responsibilities. And lastly, keep in mind your goals and what doesn't contribute to your personal growth and development. There's something that you said there about finding a place to study, right? Uh, now that I'm back in school, um, which is great because I can relate to students now, you know, mm -hmm. now that I'm back in school, I was like, I know what it's like to go to work and then go home and do homework and have projects and, and email professors and whatnot. And so uh, putting myself back in that mindset of our students has been really helpful in order to, to help them achieve. But finding your place, right, and, and not doing things just to do things is what you said. And I think that's 100%, right? I think that sometimes you want to overload your plate, and I know that I do, uh, but it's important to to see that, right? And, and I'll give uh, everyone a quick little tidbit here is, when I was going to, to school, my first job um, was to go work at fast food because mm. that's what everyone else was doing. Uh, it wasn't later that I found out that, no, that like, some schools have part-time jobs that you can do for the school. So the school district has part-time jobs, apprenticeships, internships that are paid mm -hmm. that you can do that. I know that we, the communications department, has two apprentices that are still in high school. Mm -hmm. But they're, they come to us, we teach them about what communications is, and they're getting paid, but also they're, they're going to school. And so I think that, that stuff like that is very valuable to know because we tell our kids to succeed. We tell them to dream big. But we don't show them. We don't give them a perspective necessarily. Um, and I don't want to say that we do or don't because I'm generalizing here. But I know that when I was going to school, they, they would consistently tell me that. But I had no idea. I had yeah. no idea of what was possible um, until I went and talked to a school counselor. And said, hey, the city's doing this internship during the summer. It pays more than your part-time job. Do you want to do it? And I said, well, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Let's go. And so I, I went and I worked for the city and I had an awesome time and I got paid more. Um, and that went on my resume as, a, as an employee of the city. And I thought, wow, what an opportunity. But if it wasn't for my school counselor who said, hey, there's a job opportunity, um, I would have not known any, anything about that. Uh, shifting gears here, I want to talk about self-care. What are some important things to prioritize for self-care and maintain a healthy lifestyle during the school year? Because we're, we're talking about a lot of things and a lot of students are going to be feeling overwhelmed. What are some of the things that they can do, uh, some strategies to reducing stress and anxiety related to school? Yeah. Well, I think self-care is vital to anyone's success. It's as simple as like being hungry. <laughs> you think about it, it's important to feel your body before you be, begin to become um, impacted by hunger. So um, it is important to identify what self-care works for you. For me, working out in the morning helps ground me, and it's a part of my routine. Uh, if someone knows that they can become anxiety-ridden from being behind when it comes to homework, well, then it's important for that individual to prioritize homework so they don't have to fill those feelings. I mean, consider the movie Inside Out, too. And I apologize <laughs> for any uh, spoiler alerts, but when anxiety first shows up in Riley's mind, who's the main character, mm -hmm. um, who's the first to go? And it's joy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so important to take care of yourself. It will help 
with stress and any induced anxiety. And it'll help balance your, yourself. I like that you brought in an outside resource for us <laughs> yeah. uh, to show it because I think it is important. I know that we have a lot of uh, resources here at DPS to help students uh, understand the importance of mental health and the importance of prioritizing self-care. And those are resources that we have mm -hmm. at DPS. You just got to go ask for them. You just got to seek them. And, and I know that a lot of students will say, well, I know you have this. I know you have that. Uh, there's just a lot of information right now, and that's why we have school administrators, school counselors, school psychologists um, across the entire district to find the resources that work for you, right? I like to think of it like, yes, we have 30 different resources, but only two of them are particular to your situation, mm -hmm. what your needs are. And so this is uh, w kind of looking through all of the of the resources and saying here are the ones that are actually going to help you um, and then down the line if you need it here we have more and so i think important for our audience to know like we, here is the advice but we also have the resources um next up i want to ask so what are speaking of resources <laughs> what are uh the resources available specifically for students who need uh extra academic support what is uh what does that look like for them yeah well, i will start by school counselors all right um, <laughs> i mean they're there for you uh it is not a paid service uh they're there for every student whether it's falls under the career social emotional or academic umbrella and i think it all plays into each other mm -hmm. so um even if it's academic support there might be some social emotional component to mm -hmm. that to then help that student through to do well in their academics um, so I would say go see your school counselor. Uh, they do more than just fix your schedules. I think that's a common thing of like, oh, I just have a schedule change. There is more than that. Um, your teachers as well. I mean, <laughs> they know where the resources are at. They are the resource. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who update their school G page mm -hmm. so they can tell you where things are located and or parents, guardians. Um, there's also Khan Academy, Schoology, uh, Denver Public Library provides English and Spanish speaking tutors for virtual support and are available in a variety of subjects and test prep areas um, from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day of the week through tutor.com. Um, they also offer writing supports and test prep resources from the Princeton Review. Advanced placement uh, course videos are provided through College Board uh, through the AP Classroom. That is free uh, for students to look at previous exams and daily videos to support them through the, their AP journey and studying for that exam. It's important again to know, do, do you have to pay for any of these services? No, all those services are free. Wow, yeah. okay. So then there's another way that how DPS is reducing the barriers, which is access to resources. I like to think when I was going to school, I, I don't know if these uh, things were necessarily available to me, but it's because uh, you came onto the show and now we have the ability to communicate about the resources, right? You don't know what you don't know. And so mm -hmm. this is a, a, an awesome opportunity for students to, and parents and families, to say, hey, we do have these resources. They are free. You just got to ask for them. Absolutely. Can you give us a, a final message uh, for our audience. Yeah. Well, I'll leave you with a quote. And it goes, you will never speak to anyone more than you speak to yourself in your head. So be kind to yourself. Wow. That's, that's pretty profound. Thank you for yeah. that. I appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Well, friends and families, this concludes our Educa DPS podcast for today. I want to thank our guest, Jason Nungari, for sharing this important information I'd like to ask all of you who are listening and watching to please share this content and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is the only way that we can grow. Um, so find us at Denver Public Schools Plus on YouTube, and you can also find uh, other Educa content, other resources um, from the multimedia productions team on all of the major podcast platforms. Just search for Denver Public Schools Podcast Network. Our gratitude goes out to the entire communications department 
Also, a big thank you to our proud superintendent of Denver Public Schools, Dr. Alex Marrero, for his continued support to the Educa DPS podcast and all of the multimedia productions. Don't forget to tune in to our Educa DPS podcast where the learning journey continues. And please remember to tell your children more often, I believe in you and I know you can do it. I'm Javier Ibarra. Until next time.